Thank you very much. Please let's have our seat. And public opinion, social change, deviant behaviors, crime and delinquency, social control, and public policy developments and analysis. He has graduated four PhDs with three others currently under supervision. The lecturer is a research active and has won several collaborative grants to drive his research. His most research grant was awarded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Financial Services for the Poor, FSP, to study cash primacy and digital currency uptake and use in Nigeria. In his capacity as a researcher, media specialist and communication expert, Professor Sade has consulted on many research projects, including those founded by the National Institute for Health Research, UK, the World Bank and UNESCO. Professor Sade has 67 scientific publications in reputable and high-impact journals and book chapters. He has shared his knowledge in scientific meetings and participated in workshops around the world in the UK, United States, Kenya, Senegal, Ghana, Mali, Germany, Republic of Korea, and others. Professor Tade has held many administrative positions at the university level. University of Ibadan Senate Representative on Press Council 2015 to 2016, Faculty Representative on University of Ibadan Media Committee 2012 to 2018, Deputy Postgraduate Coordinator 2011 to 2014, Examination Officers 2017 to 2019, Assistant Examination Officer 2016 to 2017, and Postgraduate Coordinator 2020 to 2023. He was also previously member Faculty of Sports Committee, University of Ibadan, 2012 to 2018, and Secretary, Sociology Department Board at the University of Ibadan, 2011 to, 2020, to 2015. Professor Olu Dayotabe has also continued to serve the academic community as the Associate Editor African Criminology Section Editor, International Journal of Offender Therapy and Comparative Criminology, and as a reviewer for journals like the International Journal of Sociology and Social Policy, International Review of Victimology, Children and Youth Services, by the Journal of Social Sciences and the Nigeria Institute of Social and Economic Research, NISA. He is a member of many prestigious academic and professional bodies. He is a member of the Conflict Research Network West Africa, CON West Africa, Nigerian Society for Criminology, NSC, Nigerian Anthropological and Sociological Association, International Sociological Association, ISI, and the Council for the Development of Social Research and Social Sciences Research in Africa, Corbestria. Professor Tade is also a fellow of the Institute for Money, Technology, and Financial Inclusion, IMFTI, University of California, IREN, USA, member of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ, and associate member of the Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, NIPR. The faculty lecturer is also certified as a policy-engaged research communicator, a pedagogical leader, an advanced research designer, impact evaluator, and community engagement specialist. He is a regular contributor to national development debates via news, media opinion, peace writing, and radio and TV appearances. Professor Olu Dayotabe is also a professor that people are reading. He is exceptionally committed to research translation for public dissemination and consumption. His efforts in this regard has earned him a continent-wide accolade with a scientific communication award for the conservation of Africa. Please join me with a clapping ovation 
in welcoming our guest speaker, Professor Oluba Yutabi. Um, my HOD from the University of Ibadan. In fact, I have um, many HODs here from the University of Ibadan. But my HOD, Department of Sociology, University of Ibadan, is here, especially uh, Professor uh, from Kefayo. Um, I have emeritus here. I uh, thank you. My mentor and supervisor is here. And the chairman of my, okay, I have two chairmen of unions that I hold uh, steadfastly. Uh, the Academic Staff Union of University uh, is represented here, Hasu. Um, hear the name and know what it means. And then I have my friend and brother, the NUJ chairman of uh, your state. I want to appreciate the dean, faculty, Management and Social Sciences, Professor Mula Campbell. And uh, sorry uh, for the, the way we related before now. I'm a deviant, so I manifest it. And that is just one of the ways to appreciate what I do. Um, the head of the department, uh, Dr. Jane Adebusui, for asking me to present this lecture. Uh, special thanks. I uh, also go to Emeritus Professor Uche Charlie Isilgu Abanie, who put a call through to me to encourage me to accept and present this lecture. It took a lot of persuasions before I accepted the challenge, not because of lack of what to say, but because my orientation at the University of Ibadan socializes me in approaching a lecture of this nature differently. I'm here today to share only from my interface with former security actors in Nigeria. Overt violence has become a common sight among security agencies, leaving behind death, property destruction, entrenched interagency animosity. Without digging deeper to solving this problem, these security actors are brought to work on a, in an operation and are expected to put in their best. This is where working together, except in agreement, comes in handy. As the saying goes, you can force a horse to the river, but can you force the horse to drink water? This lecture is framed using AUSA, well not structure, to unpack the complex social relationship among these agencies and to understand the nature and feelings which they have towards one another and how these ultimately affect national security. Before going deeper into the lecture, let me appeal to the university management, and I'm happy that the VC and the registrar are here, to recruit more permanent academic staff for criminology and security studies units of Lee City University, so it can be proud of standing well, well, as we say on the streets. I am unknown here. In a short while, I will return to the greatest university of Ibadan. But Lee, the Lee City University Department of Criminology and Security Study remains. A department is as good as the quality of its faculty. If Lee City is interested in having a strong criminology and security studies unit, where so many students are interested in studying today, she needs to attract scholars in this field and incentivize their retention. With quality faculty handling the courses in the curriculum, the quality of the degree issued in this university is never going to be in doubt. Now is the time to invest. Ladies and gentlemen, the rest of this lecture is divided into four parts. The first builds a case up for the lecture. This is followed by a deconstruction of the first part of the lecture, titled, Can Two Work Together, Except They Agree. The third part explains the outside theoretical construct of the lecture followed by findings from my interaction with security actors in South-South Nigeria. The last part concludes the lecture and put forward some recommendations. Today in Nigeria, every region has its own baggage of insecurity. On the eve of Christmas in 2023, criminal gangs invaded three communities in Plato State, raised hundreds of houses and killed over 200 persons. Until their deaths, they were planning so much for Christmas 
and were full of hope that the year 2024 will be great for them. Today, their dreams have been wiped out. We only refer to them in the past. In Abuja, kidnappers killed Nabia with three others after they beat her together with her four sisters and father. When they could not raise the 60 million ransom demanded on time, they were asked to pick the, a lifeless body at a location in Abuja. On January 16, 2024, a massive explosion rocked Ibadan, leaving more than 72 persons seriously injured and five persons dead. The destroyed houses and properties are huge. It was reported to be due to the activities of illegal miners who stored explosive devices in rented apartments before the explosions. All these cases point to the dangerous activities of organized crime in Nigeria's ecosystem. Traveling has become something you have to pay for, not only because of the terrible road infrastructures in Nigeria, but because of the hellish kidnapping, kidnapping gangs on our highways who take people at will and extort them of their hand earned money in form of payments as ransom in a country that the constitution prescribes the, the primary function of government as the protection of lives and properties. Everyone is a potential victim of crime in Nigeria, either by the direct individual behavior or by the behavior of others, which makes the rest of us susceptible. If you observe, bandits, terrorists, armed robbers, cultists, cattle rustlers, kidnappers, among others, work together because they agree in principle and practice of their own trade. They have leadership structures, division of labor, and varying degrees of specialization. Members in a criminal gang work together to achieve their common goal of their gang. The success of the criminal enterprise depends on how effectively each member plays their own role. If one person goes against the rule of their engagement, the operation may fail, and they may record casualties. If criminals agree, to work together this way. And we see how coordinated the operations have been. What then happens to our whole security agencies who are expected to protect us from these criminals? Why would criminals work together and security agencies who are supposed to protect their people do not bond together to edge out the enemies of their own people? To better understand the internal divisions to better understand the internal workings of the divisions in our sister security agencies, I delve into the yet-to-be-explored drivers of some manifest uncooperative attitudes across these agencies. There is a sense in which sociology studies group and aggregates. People with similar career paths and research agendas are often grouped together. Why, for instance, is the Department of Criminology and Security Studies at the Leeds City University not situated in the Faculty of Medicine or the Department of Agriculture, housed in the Faculty of Technology? When the Bible says, when the Bible says that a man will leave his parents and cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one, God envisions harmony in a functional social system. Even before, thank you. Even before, when, okay, even before courtship transitions into marriage, a certain question has needs a response. And of course, many of us would have attended such functions. You ask the question, will you marry me? And you expect a response, I will. At the solemnization, the man is asked, if he takes the lady as the lawful wedded wife, and he is expected to say, I do. Note that there is usually a silence in the congregation. The silence is to listen carefully to the acceptance and sometimes how it is uttered. These two must respond to every question by the officiating minister in the affirmative, I do. The ring is exchanged and inserted as a sign of commitment and or agreement to work together in sickness and in health to death do them part. If either of the parties responds in the negative, there is no agreement. Indeed, the pastor will go a step further to ask those present that, is there anyone here 
who would not want these two joined in holy matrimony for one reason or the other. Let the person say so now or forever be silent. This probing question is oriented towards ensuring that the environment within which the would-be couple would operate is peaceful and that the union will be accepted. With silence as response to the question, people will shout hallelujah. The shout of hallelujah is because any untoward comment or raising up of hand against the solemnization could lead to aborted mission or aborted marriage. However, before the day of the marriage, family members would have been introduced from both sides and then important decision makers within each family are specially visited for physical intimation and then approval. Where this is not done, some people have refused to attend such weddings because they were not regarded as important enough to be consulted as an important part of the family. But why is this important to this lecture? With a sociological background, I am trained to understand the importance of group behavior. To be able to prefer solutions to observe problems, we make attempts to understand social relations in groups, its dynamics, and how such helps to us to trace patterns of human behavior from where we can predict how and why people behave the way they do. Without doing this, we will not be able to empirically predict human behavior. In criminology and security studies too, we observe, study, and analyze data on why and how crime occurs. What factors trigger conflict? The nature of conflict, its evolution, and impact on the society. In order to be able to do this effectively, therefore, we therefore need to be able to understand social relations in groups, that is, how people behave and the culture sustaining certain forms of behavioral disposition. In this lecture, ladies and gentlemen, my focus is on security agencies in Nigeria and the nature of their social relations, which affect how they carry out their enormous responsibilities. My intellectual lens is fixated on the security ecosystem in Nigeria. My goal is to dissect the social relations among sister security agencies. This is important because if criminals are organized and agree to work together to victimize us, it is important that our security agencies also signal a unified house in the fight against crime and criminality and in the quest to protect lives and properties and secure national boundaries against external incursion. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the registrar, can two work together except they agree? For me, society is my laboratory, made up of human communities, commingling individuals. The sociologists take a step back into his or her personal bias, and in my own case, crime, security, victims of crime, social problems, and fraud are my preoccupation. The patterned nature of human behavior enab enables us to predict when, how, and where certain things will happen, including what are the likely triggers of such behavioral manifestations. My mind is wired in such a way that it begins to probe and ask questions in a particular way, at times the most unexpected way. It was late sociologist Akinshola Akewowo in his inaugural lecture who says sociological imagination, which is translated to me for Motayeshe, can be applied to identify, know, understand, and solve the problems which plague Nigeria. Indeed, he argues that the imaginative abilities of professionals are put to test when they solve peculiar societal problems. In our secondary school, we did social studies, roughly interpreted as a backbeck poeda, which gets elaborated at the university level to be called sociology, where we were taught about the complexities in human behavior and how we need to learn about the uniqueness of cultures and peoples and how to relate with them. Through this subject, we are able to appreciate the complexities in working together as humans coming from varying ethnic, religious, ideological, and professional backgrounds, and how that impacts how we relate and deal with one another. Indeed, the nature of human relationship is now conditioned by different levels of affinitive relationships. I receive inspiration from the intellectual submission 
of late professor of sociology, Akishola Akiwowo, who identified the variations on the theme of association in his inaugural lecture. Akiwowo identified Alajobi, consanguinity, and Alajobi, co-residentship, as people who are tied together by, by blood relationship and by the fact of living together. However, some contemporary forms of affinity relationships have created new forms of bonding in relation to tasks to be performed. Hence, the emergence of Alabashi Shekpo, co-workers, who may not necessarily be living together or blood-related, but are connected by virtue of the goals of the work they do and are somehow united by the goals the organization they work for assets for them. The binding philosophy of security agencies in Nigeria is the protection of lives and properties, but can two actually work together, except they agree. Indeed, the Bible recognizes the need for consensus in the smooth working of social relationships. The English dictionary defines work as acting in association with or to pursue a course of life. With other words, can two people work together in association to pursue a course, except they are in agreement? While consensus implies agreement, conflict signals disagreement. Conflict is a normal feature of every functional society, and they range from the most trivial to the most profound. Conflict interactions range from overt confrontation and competition to attempts to suppress and avoid confrontation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there have been series of interagency conflicts of varying dimensions, ranging from verbal abuse to violent attacks, culminating in the loss of lives, destruction of security facilities, and sustenance of injuries. While interagency rivalry, or if you like, conflict is not peculiar to Nigeria. It is imperative on us to understand its nature and underlying factors responsible for the manifestations which we see. How does interagency bickering affect national security and what contributes to this phenomenon? Since the agencies come from different backgrounds, one another to make Nigeria and Nigerians to experience security of lives and properties. Today, there is terrorism and banditry in the north kidnapping an unknown government in the west, in the east, kidnapping and armed robbery in the southwest. Crime is indeed widespread. And this is why only working together will enhance the important mandates of getting our people, our brothers, and our country well secured. Can one agency do all these enormous functions alone? The answer for me is a capital no. But of course, with this background, let us just go into a few cases of interagency uh, conflict that's happened in the last three months. On May 30, um, 2023, the Punch newspaper reported a breaking news of men of the Department of State Services who blocked the access to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Office at Ikoyi. The DSS only vacated when President Bola had met Tinubu, other that they should vacate the premises. And that is significant for me because it was the first thing that the security agencies used in welcoming the new president to show that things are not, and everyone is trying to muzzle the other one out. But I see that was not enough. The DSS again fought with correction officers over the custody of the former central bank governor, Godwin Emefiele, in Abuja. The two sister agencies who were supposed to cooperate engaged in needless violence. They ruffled themselves and showed disregard and disrespect to one another on international television. Needless rivalry, superiority battle like this continues to affect our fight against insecurity. How do you expect correction officers whose uniform was torn to cooperate with the DSS after such violence. How, how, will you, how will EFCC cooperate with the DSS with this kind of experience? The battle for respect between the police and the NSCDC or the army is another tough one. In August 2022, soldiers attached to the 81 division 
were reported to have beaten a police officer to death around Ojo area of Lagos State. There are many videos of police fighting or and or harassing the NSCDC officers. In fact, NSCDC people too have the people that they also harass too. So it's power past power. Apart from this hostile display on one another, overlapping mandate is also a major a major cause of the interagency conflict. This problem is not theirs, but that of the statutes that established all of them. Their constitutional mandates overlap and causes friction. I have, the, I have had the privilege of training security officers on interagency collaboration. And I ask the question, which agency would you like to work with and why? And which agency don't you like working with and why? The responses I get, usually, the responses I usually get from participants shocks me. It exposes deep-seated animosities among our security agencies. The responses tell a story of why these agencies may frustrate one another and may not cooperate, let alone collaborate. If bandits, terrorists, kidnappers, hand robbers work together to make Nigeria unsafe, how can the security institutions expected to neutralize them by fighting themselves and hope to win the battle against insecurity? In fact, one of the issues raised uh, by the governor uh, in Plato State uh, of the attack is about releasing intelligence information and security agencies not working together. And most of the attack would have been prevented. And so it is affecting us. If these are happening among former security agencies, one can only imagine the experiences of Amoteku in the hands of these operatives. How they will treat hunters who have become critical components of the security system in Nigeria or other indigenous security organizations in their interactions with the former security sector actors. The fact is that when we fight among ourselves as security agencies, we give room for criminals to operate since they know that our houses are not in order. As we often say in my union, the academic staff of uni academic staff union of universities also, a people united can never be defeated. Those defeated were never united. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, how can interagency relations in um, uh, improve to engender collaboration and enhance Nigeria's security. Promoting interagency collaboration and conflict resolution among personnel of security agencies in Nigeria is the theme of one of the training workshops put together by the Conrad Adenua Stiftung, a German foundation inspired to foster interagency collaboration with a view to engendering conflict resolution and enhancing human security. Available evidence indicates that poor interagency collaboration among Nigeria's security institutions is one of the major factors militating against effective conflict resolution and security management in Nigeria. The consequences of not working effectively together culminate in increasing fear of insecurity and diminishes trust in the capabilities of the security system to protect the lives and properties of civilian populations across uh, Nigeria and particularly those that live in terror intensive zones. The 2023 Global Terrorism Index, GTI, places Nigeria in the eighth position of countries was hit by the negative outcomes of terrorist activities from Boko Haram in the northeast, banditry and kidnapping in the northwest, secessionist agitations in south, south, southeast and southwest, the security system in Nigeria is practically overstretched. In this situation, only the working together of the units that make up Nigeria's security system will de-escalate conflict and neutralize security threats through complementary operations and credible intelligence sharing. Now I move to the other part of the lecture, the Hausa social relations theorizing security agencies. Mr. Vice Chancellor, other principal officers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to explain and theorize the working relationship among security actors in Nigeria, I deployed the observational lens of the Yoruba in describing the first relationship 
between brothers of the same blood, birth and parenthood. How, sir? Well, not. It's a powerful seed with several fortification functions it performs in the body of man. Among these functions are its usefulness for the arts, enhancing weight loss and fortification of the body. But despite its usefulness to the body, the outward appearance of a typical or not may not show the one that is still good for human consumption and one that is already bad for human consumption. I have carefully selected to use AUSA as a metaphoric seed to represent the Nigeria security ecosystem as a functional system whose internal workings may not be understood unless it is opened and dissected. Doing this will enable us to not only understand the, that appearance is not enough, but also see that the complex whole of human interrelationships be, within and among sister agencies matter to the security of lives and properties mandates which they are saddled with. A typical house seed looks healthy from outside. But not many will be able to know which one is still good for human consumption. I have fallen victim of this. I bought AUSA and thought the appearance matters and could reveal the hidden portions to me. I was wrong. If I remember correctly, half of the AUSA in the nylon that I bought were not good for human consumption. Sociologically, therefore, we cannot understand and or explain consensus and conflict among security agencies who have mandates to protect lives and properties of Nigerians by merely observing them through their beautiful uniforms. Although the uniforms communicate, it however covers up human lived experiences. Only the problem of the lived experiences of individuals will be able to elevate intellectual interrogation into the issues and around internal workings and why security actors behave to one another the way they do. It goes without saying that we have experienced or observed physical manifestations of the conflict. Nonetheless, the overt manifestation of interagency conflict in Nigeria tells us that we need to go beyond the surface. We need to move beyond the fact that they are children of the same mother, or if you like, children of the same father, the executive arm of government, as we call them sister agencies, indicating deep-rooted connection. At the level of social thought, the Yoruba constitute an intellectual powerhouse who use the observation of patterns of events to predict its social phenomena. At the family level, sociologists talk about the empty shell family, which appears to be without problem from merely looking at it from the outside. However, a deeper dive into the social configuration of its internal workings of such families will reveal the hidden and show that appearance can be very deceitful. Many of us, while growing up, have had to engage in certain form of conflict with our older or younger siblings. It may become pathetic when the older one is the weaker one and the younger one intimidates the older one, usually maybe the sister. The parents then steps in to straighten things out. They warn them about how brothers and sisters should watch out for each other, rather than behaving like Omo Yawusa. By Omo Yawusa, the Yoruba refers to the membranous partition, which separates the world not into two peers. They are part of the same system, but do not see high to high. I therefore frame this lecture using this admonition by the Yoruba observation of Aousa culture. I frame the security system of Nigeria as the Aousa seed with membranous partition. In asking the question, which agency do you love working with and why? And which agency don't you love working with and why? I set out to unpack the underlying factors and the consideration which regulates social relationships among our security agencies and the implications of not erasing such partitions on national security. The Nigerian police, NDLEA, NSCDC, Customs, EFCC, ICPC, Army, Navy, cannot individually solve the insecurity problems facing the country as they constitute units 
which make up the security system in Nigeria. However, if one fails to relate properly with the other, the overall goal, which is to secure lives and properties, will be difficult to attain. This is why it is important to unpack the reasons why certain security agencies would love to work with some agencies and not work with others. Doing this will enable us to understand the membraneous partition which frustrates interagency relations. This may help us to inform the authorities in addressing the reasons underlying the partitioning in the working of our security agencies. While the shell of the AUSA provides a larger covering for the security system, the partition is used to represent the borders in human relations and interagency relations which ultimately affects collaboration resulting in the prevailing Omar Iya Awusa culture. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we have all come from different walks of life, it is also important for us to ask yourself that question. Who do you love working with? And who don't you love working with? And if you can also write the reasons why you love working with some people and the reasons why you don't also love working with some other people, you'll be able to see that unless and until, and I'm sure that even if we ask Mr. Vice Chancellor, those sets of people that he loves working with, these are people. But when people are not threatened by survivor, they are not likely to work together. When we are all threatened by survivor, when everyone knows that this thing will kill us, that is when all of us agree to work together because we still want to live. So, everything that I will say from now on is about my experience in training security agencies, actors from across all these agencies in the Northwest, in the South-South, in the Southeast, and then in the Northeast. And this is part of the session which I take, and I ask those two questions. Because we, were, we are interested in engendering interagency collaboration, but how can my class go ahead without understanding how they even feel about themselves? We brought them together in, in a hall like this, and then they are seated next to the other, and then they are in uniforms. So they would smile to one another. By the time I ask the question, which agency do you love working with and why? The feedback that you get from the hall goes like, hmm. And I say, tear a sheet of paper and then put it down. And then when they finish writing that, I turn to the others. I say, flip the coin. Which agency don't you love working with and why? And then they are, okay. And then they will write it. Now, it is this interface with the security sector that has brought this idea of this lecture so that we appreciate what is happening on the field. So when you hear that things are not working, there are certain things that need to be addressed at organizational level, at the government level, and then at the individual agencies level. And so what you will be hearing next are, are things that security actors uh, gave me in one of these uh, sessions. So I asked the question, which agency would you love working with and why? Generating insight from security personnel on who they love working with was part of the regular session aimed at understanding what fosters collaboration and what attracts people to desire to anticipate or desire to work with one agency and what reasons drive it. Participant res uh, responses point to issues core to smooth security operations. Sister agencies look out to work or collaborate with some agencies because of their unique skills and the value which they bring to the fulfillment of the mandates of securing lives and properties. For instance, a superintendent of police in River State prefers to work with the DSS because they are better in intelligence gathering, trust in terms of cooperation and collaboration. On his own part, a customs officer loves working with the army due to their ability in crisis management. An officer of the Federal Road Safety Corps also loves working with the Army because of transparency, commitment, and their understanding of the essence of team spirit. Another FRSC officer states, 
I love working with the Nigerian police because they give me proper backup and protection while performing or discharging my duties. This one is easy to understand. When you see where FRSC stays on the road, they use police to carry out their own function. So today, the police provides backup. So when police stops you, and then before you move a stretch, because there is no instruments that the government has given to them to actually carry out their function, they have had to fabricate and innovate ways of doing the work. They are not supposed to point at you or stand in the middle of the road and ask you to pass. It's against the law. But the country has not provided with them the tools, the technology, to even book vehicles and then, of course, bring your fine to you at your doorstep. So they have to work with that way and they need the police. Whose checkpoints can be just meters away and then they can leverage on that because you, before you speed, they can then, of course, carry out their function. So we can understand that. Similarity in training and orientation are also critical factors which influence which agency personnel of other sister agencies are interested in working with. Typically, understanding working procedures and similarities in organizational cultures implies that there are only little frictions which are easily nipped in the bud in such a way that it does not affect the goal. Roughly means that when we show our worth or significance to those, we show our worth or significance to those who underrate our impact. This can therefore work against national security. When co-worker relationships is strained and nothing is done to work at it or solve the underlying issue leading to such feeling of hatred and animosity among our security agencies. This respect can trigger resistance and lead children of the same father in Nigeria security ecosystem to fight dirty with costly implications for interagency collaboration, cooperation and coordination. On the other hand, agencies that show respect to other sister agencies or behave like father figure to other agencies are more likely to experience cooperation in working a relationship with other sister agencies. This is the relationship that exists between the military and the NSCDC. In this relationship, of course, it is the training uh, uh, that brings uh, them together. Security agencies in Nigeria must close ranks and eliminate rivalry. Security is arrived at when every part of the security system, the police, the army, the NSCDC, the NDLEA, the immigration, customs, and others, discharge their roles efficiently and balance its weakness with the strength of the other security agencies. Inferiority complex and superiority battles between and among our security agencies only aggravates the insecurity of everyone and deepens national insecurity. The successes recorded in a joint operation must be collectively owned and its failure must be shared. There is no such situation when a particular agency will arrest some criminal and then hand over to another agency and the agency will parade those suspects before the press and claim the sole glory of it. You need to, and that is why you see that agencies now, when they arrest criminals, they parade them in their own organization force before handing them over baby to the police. You need to jointly hold the success because everyone contributes to it. Today, you can hardly win a battle about kidnapping without involving hunters and the rest of them. Who understand that particular ecosystem? Why will you then rescue people from um, the kidnappers then and not recognize the role hunters play? And you still want them to lead you into the bush next time somebody is kidnapped. It won't work that particular way. They need better welfare too. Security men, insecurity of welfare. And I ask them the question, can somebody that is not protected protect people? You cannot be paying them terrible salaries and expect them to protect us. They are themselves vulnerable. Without anything to protect them, without gadgets to work, without insurance, what happens to their family when their family members die on the battlefield? You don't want to hear the stories of how they evacuate their own dead bodies and how dead bodies are taken back to the families of those people that die on the battlefront. We need to do better if we want our security um, agencies to, of course, be more committed uh, to the work. Finally, 
teammateship as against leadership posture, which spring of superiority contest should be the new guiding philosophy of interagency relations. The Federal Ministry of Interior must encourage funding of interagency training, which will further improve relationship among agencies, bring about understanding and encourage system support, rather than working in silos and achieving little and giving criminals the opportunity to explore the seeming disharmony to wreak havoc on horrors. <laughs> to check the problems of overlapping mandates, there is need for necessary reforms to be in place so that extant laws, I ask them how they feel, and they tell me that with weak law, every part of the body is in trouble. And I tell you, I tell them that, yes, the weak law, but how many of you did not find solution to that particular problem? How many of you cut off the finger that had the weak law? And they will tell me, ah, cut, sir. How, 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 sir? How do you expect me to cut? I said, but that is the one that is bad, that is causing pain to the entire body. Why not let's cut it? And then you can live peacefully. And they tell me they have to look for solution. Now, I, I conclude that for every person, as we are seated here, if you have written down that someone, he is in our organization, in your department that you cannot work with, and you have listed the reasons, and you have also listed the reasons why there are some people that you cannot work with and the reasons. Can you not be the problem why things are not working? If it is possible for us to find solution to treat Wicklow from one single hand that tells us how significant that particular finger is to the entire body, the same thing can be applied in the security system to get our problem resolved. Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity. No, 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 before you do some replace, um, let me, my supervisor um, is, is here, Professor Adeyinka Aderito. Um, that's the person who supervised my thesis. I is a um, former Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academic University of Ibadan. My HOD again, uh, Professor Funke Fayon. Uh, Emeritus Professor Isigu Abanye used his call and uh, influence to make this happen. Thank you, sir. There is one union that I belong to, and that union fights for the children of the masses to get qualitative education. You may not like them. But many of us are committed to that particular course. And present in this hall is my chairman of the Academic Staff Union you know, of Universities, University of Ibadan. <laughs> Professor Ayuaki Wale. <laughs> All my colleagues from the University of Ibadan, those who read this piece, Professor Oluwato Siadeni Ye, Oreko Ya. Dr. Busare, there are two, uh, Oyelola, plenty, plenty. And then, of course, you see, there is one thing that has influenced what I do, and that is the field of journalism. And the, pe the person in this hall who is now the state chairman of the Nigeria Union of Journalists or your state, we were on the field together as reporters. And I'm happy we are growing. And my friend, is the state chairman of Nigeria Union of Journalists or your state, Ademola Babalola. <laughs> and there are plenty of here, but there are some people who also made it possible for me to be in Lee City University. Please help me thank the Vice Chancellor. <laughs> I 
I thank you so much, sir, for making it possible for me to be here. And without the colleagues in the department, uh, we have a strong former CP, Dr. Sibyl Akifewa. Those are the people in my unit, oh, is clap for them. And these are the, the bone box of the Criminology and Security Studies Unit. Colleagues in sociology, social work, psychology, thank you so much for giving me a space to occupy here. If I've disappointed you, I can improve on myself. But just take this as a small dose that I can give. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor, for that riveting lecture. Uh, at this junction, we shall like to entertain questions now. Uh, if you have questions to ask based on the lecture that we just listened to, please, this is a time to signify by waving your hand, or we can write them down, and uh, the, uh, we shall call it. Thank you so much, sir. questions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I salute everybody. My name is Online Kaabuola. A lot of people call me Mr. Parrot. Um, <laughs> Mr. Lecturer, I would just like to, I want to congratulate you first. Then secondly, I think you left me more confused because we have all been talking about our constitution that it's defective and most of the problems that we have with these folks that you are talking about even got uh, maybe encouraged by the problem with the constitution, the leadership in Nigeria. But I'll just ask you this question. If you can, uh, it's like a way in Yoruba, like you two use AUSA. If you, are, if you love to smoke cigarette, can you ask your children not to smoke Indian hemp? God bless you. Thank you. Please, can you step forward? Thank you very much, Prof, for that uh, super califragilistic, expavious presentation. Um, my question is, uh, <clears throat> my name is Alaudin Noah. Would you blame the clashes between the security and the safety uh, personnel on lack of ideal hierarchy in Nigeria or lack of uh, professionalism? Like, uh, for instance, if you look at uh, what happened at, uh, at the court, during the Mifile, uh, Mifile's trial, whereby we saw the DSS people uh, harassing the uh, personnel of the uh, prison. So, and the same thing at Ojob Barak there, when the soldier was, drive, uh, was riding on the wrong way, where the security attached to the governor had to stop him. I was like, I'm a soldier. I was now, ah, uh, that makes it more difficult. So, uh, you blame him on professionalism or lack of uh, an ideal structure, hierarchical structure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any more questions? All right, sir. Professor. My Egbon, those are our leaders in the field of journalism. So, Egbon Yinka, <clears throat> if you love sm to smoke, can you ask your children not to smoke? Is 
be in the IM. Uh, smoke now, smoke now. Smoke now, smoke. Now, of course, uh, ser seriously, I, I, I understand that clearly. A question of socialization. Can you manage to dodge what you are doing from the, um, <clears throat> the feasibility of your children? If you cannot do that, it is not possible. As sociologists, a child who grows up in a family where the uh, father beats up the mother, and each time the, he beats the mother, the wife keeps quiet, sees that as a good weapon. So when he gets married and the wife knocks, the next thing he does is that since my father used to achieve silence and domination by beating, this is the best tool to use. That is what they have been exposed to. And that is the problem with the system. Now, if the system is rotten and the leadership is not forthcoming to clean it up, you need to appreciate the men. I ask them questions. And I ask them, is it about our lack of capacity or willingness that we are not winning the insecurity battle? What they tell me is that, sir, if you give us free hand to work, within a few months we will hear this insecurity. But what about leadership? That makes it impossible for them to work. So you need to be in their shoe. The difference between empathy and sympathy. If you are not in their shoe, you will not understand what they are experiencing. Then, uh, my, sorry, my students from uh, criminology uh, units, um, UI, the stubborn affair is, is one of them. So professionalism or ideal structure. You see, there is a part of the lecture, we of course, m m uh, many of you have, that deals with the history of what is also responsible for what we are experiencing today. At a particular point in time in the history, the police were well taken care of. And at a particular point in the history, the military came and that's changed things for the police. No acquisition on their part and all those things. So they became weakened by the day. And then there is no welfare coming to their side. And they are the ones that are located in every community that we can go and meet. You cannot meet. So it is about this entrenched thing. We need to review. And that is why one of the recommendations that we have made, even at the training, is to influence the National Assembly to revise some of these things so that these people can effectively work and discharge their uh, duties. Professionalism is core, but how many of them are trained periodically? Ask them. How many of them are trained? And when we train them, where do we take them to? I have had the opportunity of training police exclusively, and the one that I talk about where I train, they are just too polar apart. You can't train people in that condition and expect them to perform. You cannot. It is not possible. We are not kind to our security agencies. And those that are in leadership of this country need to take that seriously if we are ever going to get out of this insecurity mess. Thank you. Please, can you put your hands together once again? If it's not that um, there is no time, time on our side, I have about five questions that will have asked our, our lecturer. But maybe I will see you after the service. All right, thank you very much. Please, because uh, we have spent much time, now we will be winding down gradually. Uh, at this time, I will want to crave the indulgence of the registrar to please hand over the uh, little bit of um, um, uh, thanks uh, in the souvenir to our guests. Thank you. Before that, let us appreciate our distinguished professors, esteemed professors from Vassar Yes. On behalf of the council, the management, and the entire Lee City University, we appreciate our esteemed professor from Vassar of Badman.
So another round of applause for them. And we are very proud of our brother here, Professor Olugai Otade. At least we are very proud of you. Keep the flag flying. Premier University of Banu is the first premier university. And this university is also the premier private university. Yes. We, we have a lot of things in common. That is why our relationship between University of Banu will continue to be symbiotic. So once again, we appreciate you for coming. Thank you. So, Madam Registrar, over to you. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor. Uh, well, I can't contest what my VC said, so I agree. <laughs> Thank you. So, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor, the, who is the Chairman of Senate, and the faculty, the entire members of staff and students of the university, we say thank you so much. And this is a well-delivered lecture. Thank you. So we have a check-in for you. Right at this moment, uh, because I believe every one of us we are beginning to hurry for the Nigeria uh, South America, I mean South Africa match. I would like to call two persons to give uh, a closing remark and then a vote of thanks. Uh, first of all, I will want to call any faculty member from the Department of. Um, psychology, criminology, and uh, social works. Do we have any faculty member? Please, we are not yet gone. Yes, we are. Oh, God, God. Hello. 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 